Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here alongside Sean from Tested. And Sean and I are here today to do a quick and dirty, well, model kit assembly. Yeah. Sean, you have brought in one of the most delightful snap fit model kits I've ever of, seen. Of all time, yes. From Bandai, it is of course, <laughs> the Humble Cup Noodle. Yeah. Uh, we, had, <laughs> we had to build this. Yes. There's like, We've done so many Bandai kits in the past, Gundam, Star Wars, um, all are excellent kits. And this is just so ludicrous, we had to build it. <laughs> now I saw on social media, you actually had done an assembly of one yes. of these. Um, so we're not just gonna do an assembly because you have some tips uh, and, and some mm. paint and things yeah. to make this go the extra mile, which we're gonna get to. Uh, but for those of you curious, this is a Bandai model kit. You can find this yeah. all over the internet very reasonably priced, and this is actually a licensed yeah. cup noodle <laughs> it set. Is. It is. <laughs> like, the, there's like, uh, they even put tidbits in the uh, oh my goodness. instruction manual. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and this is, um, I had so much fun building at home, I was like, Norm, we have to build. And uh, they are still available. I bought this one a few weeks ago um, for, there wasn't too expensive. So. It, it's in the grand tradition of Japanese sampuru, the, the fake food that you might see in your local Japanese restaurant, the window. Meticulously done. Oh, so realistic, so delicious looking. The floating chopsticks, the hanging noodles. Uh, and one thing I found interesting, and maybe this is one of those Mandela effects, Yeah. but growing up, in my mind, having instant ramen and the noodles and the cup, it was always cup o noodle. Yes. For me. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, you uh, I had the exact same reaction. I was like, I'm putting it together. I'm like, cup noodle. Wait a second. I, I had to actually look it up. Uh, and apparently, it is cup noodle. Or I've noticed that the American ones is cup noodles. So oh. I don't know if cup noodle and cup noodles is a U.S. versus. Uh, Japan thing or not, mm, mm. but yeah, yeah, I was living the lie as well, Norm. It, the, the packaging, so charming, even, like you said, with the, the instruction. I mean, how could you not want to buy, it's the exploded ramen, like exploded view ramen, like mm -hmm. how could you not want to buy that? Yeah, it, it says even on, on the box here, an instruction manual that reveals the secrets of cup noodle is also what could they included. Be? <laughs> the secret of salt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, let's crack this open because it's a it looks like a pretty straightforward snap it fit model kit really assembly. It really is. Uh, and but we should also so on the original and what we're going to do for this, we're actually doing very little painting. Mm. Um, and that's the way a lot of you've seen us do the Star Wars and the Gundam. They're designed to be that way. Everything's cast in the right colors, and you can put together any of the the Gundam or Star Wars and they look great. And I definitely, the, the, the nature of this model is like, it has to be left plastic. Like it yeah. has to be like, yeah, read as a model exactly, kit. Exactly. So I did, the only thing we're actually gonna paint is a, a little bit of the logo and some of the food. Mm, mm. But other than that, we're gonna just do straight up. Great, yeah. so I'm here to assist in the assembly, uh, get all these pieces out. <laughs> There's way more pieces than you would think. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got little bits oh, of the shrimp on a sprue. Shrimp on a sprue. Yep. Uh, but let's first maybe get this all out of the plastic <laughs> packaging. I feel like I use it as a like showcase. Like this is this is all we can do. It's an injection molded flex yeah. because the uh, as we've marveled many times in the past, the uh, registration, the consistency, so the the fineness of some of the details on this, the multicolor sprues, multi like different uh, drometer plastics. Yep. Uh, it's the fact that they can do this all at quantity is mightily impressive. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I mentioned the shrimp earlier. There's shrimp decals. Yeah. <laughs> shrimp decals on top of it that we will apply it. on top of the shrimp. Yep. <sighs> okay, uh, pop open the instruction manual and yeah. I will feed you parts as um, we do the assembly. We're basically gonna start with, they, they just start you with the cup, which makes sense. Uh, and um, we're going to need uh, the B4, which is the oh. white bit. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I got, already, I need to point this out. I know. I know. <laughs> First of all, the, the paint finish on this reads as the styrofoam. Yeah. Because the cup noodle package is, the cup itself has, it's, it has that like, maybe not 
exactly it's not. A sheet. It's like an egg white, yep. a, 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 egg egg uh, eggshell yep. sheen to it on yep. the styrofoam. They've perfectly, they perfectly got captured that. And then they have the indentations of from the. the the nutrition information, the whole thing, the it's barcode. So, it's so unnecessary. Oh, <laughs> like, because they wow. include uh, they include complete sticker sheets yes. for all of the text info, but it's also etched into the model itself, which is just like you know, <laughs> ah, ah, chef's kiss, <laughs> noodle chef kiss, cup noodle chef kiss. Uh, we're of course using nippers here, and Sean, these are your personal god hands. Oh yeah, this <sighs> yep, they're my god hands. Yep. <sighs> You went on a deep dive onto the God hands, and I have the blue <laughs> handle oh ones. My God. These are the red handle ones. Uh, educate me on the on the differences. Yeah, for those, if if you haven't caught it before, we have oohed and awed about the God hand nippers. Which, first of all, what a name! I mean, how how can you go wrong with God hands? I mean, and they're 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 flush cut, so you get the flush cut uh, cutters for sprues, so that you don't leave a little nub when you cut the uh, uh, model part out of the sprue. And the God hands are just like, they're like precisely machined and like super accurate and like absolutely no mark whatsoever. And there are, we just, after we had both bought some, we discovered there are, there are grades. So there's different colors. There's like blue, red, whatever. S and, like, and one, I, I don't remember, I don't remember what I have or the differences between them right now, but it was like one is only meant for cutting it from the sprue. One is meant for cutting the flash uh, that might be left from the model. And like, so you literally go through three different grades of cutters that <laughs> cut your pieces out. Uh, I think that these are the, I, I don't remember if these are the rough cut or the fine cut ones, but they work fantastic, like right off the bat. <laughs> Can so, confirm. And if you don't, I mean, and if you don't want to, uh, Spend the God hand money. We have the, uh, these are what the uh, Zeron ones, which I have bought many times. Yes. These are great too. And you can you can get these for like under 20 bucks. And I would argue ergonomically yeah. more comfortable. They are with a little nice padded grip. All right, so um, Norm is feeding me. So we got uh, G2, uh, C3. Yeah, so we got all the, the pieces that we need. And <laughs> so this is, this is just getting, so these are all keyed. So, you have to make sure that you line up the little correct key and peg with the matching hole on the lid. And part of this is um, for details and part of it is just to help align the other pieces. But basically we have just installed this whole thing just to make the stripe on the cup. <laughs> it's, it's so good. And then um, once again, this one has a key that then you have to line up with the key on the red ring so that everything lines up perfectly. And just like all of our other band eyes that snaps together. No glue needed, no, no paint needed. Everything can be done with just. So there we have added cutters. our red stripe to our container. I love it. <clears throat> now this is what you're getting ready next is I think what I was like, oh man, this Blew is super impressive. <laughs> this this was definitely them bragging. So I think I think you have the right one here. So uh, if you know your, your cup noodles, it has the, the red stripe and then the gold hatches mm -hmm. on it. And they have made two separate models. Now let me hold on, there's a very special notch I have to line up with this. Let me let me find it. Yeah. Think about all the different ways that, a, a, a manufacturer could have designed, you know, a cylinder with a red stripe and uh, with a gold gold hash. It could have been a, a decal sticker, right? Oh, this it could have been yeah. masking and requesting you to paint it. But the fact that they have separate injection molded pieces, yeah. which the, you know the molds themselves were thousands and thousands of dollars. I know. <laughs> For a to, to then so, so register a yeah there it goes restaurant. Oh, I mean that they did all of this engineering just to get these these little fingers as separate <laughs> details. I love it. That I think uh, that was the one. I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun build. Um, and that's one yeah. where you, all the fingers have to interlock around the entire yeah. cylinder, which means any warping, yeah, you're not going to get that to match up, mm -hmm. line up. So yeah, satisfying snaps all the way around. Yep.
Okay, now we get we get into oh. the next imp impressive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So we've done the top portion and the bottom portion. Yeah. Again, looking very much like white styrofoam. Yeah. Sandwiching, of course, in the middle, uh, the main part of the body. And you see, this is that white piece, the main part. The, the yeah. cup noodle itself, the logo, uh -huh. is recessed here. So again, not paint masking. No. It's not a decal. It's a separate injection molded piece. Which presumably is this right here, Sean. Yeah, but they, yeah, and then they go the further step of all the letters are uh, separate inserts, um, which is, yeah, that's just showing off. Showing right? off. Because they, they fit perfectly inside everything. So, so I will lay these out for you yeah. as I've prepped them. But it's the shading inside the logo. I know. The red and white of the letters. So, yeah. Um, I was getting clever. They just have uh, the their tolerances are so tight that uh, they just basically have little slots on the back of each letter that match up with the slots on here, and they they just so nicely pop in. So yep. we have the 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 U, and it has the little division mark there for a U, yes. right at yep. the top. Yeah. So you can't see it, but there's little engraving lines for splitting the U uh, at the top. They provide on the sheet, these microscopic red stickers. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so there is a point where like, it's gotta be one piece. Right. We're not gonna split two pieces for the U, but we'll give you this red sticker yeah. to divide it. So I guess this is an engineer, like, so why didn't they just mold it with yeah. the opening? I, they're, I'm sure there's a reason. Durability. Uh, yeah. yeah, so they provide you with a little tiny sticker that you put in there. So this is the point where it's like, you know what, I'll paint that. Okay. Because that, okay. that's an easy, that's an easy thing and uh, I I found the this is the exact perfect red. I couldn't believe it. It's insignia red from our friends at Mission Models. Oh, uh, uh, which I, I I'm gonna finally thank them. They sent me and uh, Kate a a big box of paints like mm -hmm. months and months and months ago, and uh, I just never got to use them on camera. So thank there you, Mission go. Models. Uh, and there's Insignia Red, perfect match to Cup Noodle. Yeah. It's bright, but there's yeah. a little bit of a, maybe a salmon almost to yep. it. It's, it's not and the pure I'm, red. I'm also gonna take the opportunity to share the most, one of the most ridiculous purchases I've made recently. Okay. So, okay, so I don't, I don't, I don't do enough painting like on a regular basis and they'll sit for like weeks at a time mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then they separate and then you're like, try, yeah. you're, you're shaking them like crazy <laughs> trying to get them to shake. This, uh, this is like a, as seen on TV commercial. Yeah. Right? And, and you want to start your paints and they've separated. Now, in the, in the old days uh, with the old like little tester bottles, I'd stick a toothpick in there, mm -hmm. but a lot of these are either dr like dropper bottles and or, or very small openings. You can't get a, any way to stir it in there. So I'd messed around with like, little mini paint shakers, sure. like basically the, the the small equivalent of what they have at the, the, you know, hardware store. And I just found this recently, and this is a Vortex mixer, right? Vortex mixer. <laughs> They're typically meant for lab use for like a test tube. So you take your test tube. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> And you're literally just pressing the bottle against it and yeah. it's vibrating. It's fantastic. It works so well. And especially with the uh, the mission models have a little uh, mixer ball, ball yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. And it, I've been shocked, particularly with the uh, metallic colors where all the pigment settles. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I got it about a month ago and I've been using it nonstop. And it just basically just has a motor that's moving in a circular like 5,600 RPM. And so I've been, you just, you know, and it's also good. They use these a lot in nail salons also for uh, mixing like mm. nail polishes. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah, so I just hold it on there for a few seconds and let it do its thing and gets nice mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Vortex mixer. That is absolutely yeah. an extravagant purchase. Oh, but absolutely. a wonderful tool tip. Uh, I'm sure many of you out there will be finding, <laughs> I know, I know looking people, for these now. I know people are rolling their eyes. It's like, really? <laughs> no, or, but, uh, or, or, or on, on online. <laughs> But like, confirming their orders. But like typically, this is my bottle of paint that has like three layers to it because it's been sitting so long. And it's <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, vortex mixer. So we're gonna use our, let's see, I brought I brought a few fine brushes. Let's see which one's gonna work well here. In and the, and the glasses have got to come off for this. And, and uh, I'll see if I can. Now I do think, I do recall I think I might have had to do two coats on this for the best effect, but...
All right. So, uh, okay, perfect. You you have uh, some some of the the back and sides done. So this is the point where we're gonna we're gonna talk about one of the <laughs> silly crazy things I did. Pro tip. So the they have all this beautiful etching right on the cup of all the ingredients and like the nutrition information, the the heating instructions. And they provided very well done uh, labels that you would put over top of that. Uh, has the barcode and you know, et cetera. And this this is perfectly fine. It looks looks perfectly fine. But it's like this is an opportunity where we could uh, use some of my other uh, paint stuff available that would work really well in this situation. So what I used were these lacquer markers. Oh, yeah. And these, they look like crayons. Um, and these are what I would use on uh, when I would fix film cameras. Uh, you know, your, your lenses always have like the f-stop and the focal distance uh, etched in yep. and they're white or orange or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's and, machined into the other. Yeah, the and old school, I don't know, they're probably cast, just using yeah. ma uh, paint and, and masks and everything now, but uh, on a lot of the old lenses that I have, they were done with lacquer sticks. And these mm. are basically, it, it goes on soft like a crayon or like a grease pencil, and then it will dry and harden to like really durable, uh, uh, um, non-squishy uh, lettering then. So I figured this would be the perfect use <laughs> on the cup noodle. As opposed to just using the decals. And yeah. you've got the right gold? Yep. And the and red? The, the red's pretty close. I couldn't get exact, but it, it, there's not that much red. It's mo mostly uh, gold and black, um, which I have misplaced my black, but we'll do the gold here and you'll get the idea. Now, um, when you get lacquer sticks, you want to store them in a plastic bag um, because the, the outer they will, will dry out and harden. Now, they're gonna dry out and harden even in the bag. So what the, one of the first things you need to do is, uh, when you get it out, you need to kind of uh, carve off the outside bit a little bit. Okay. So, uh, and you'll know you're getting close is when it will, it will feel less crusty when you're cutting it and it's feeling buttery. And that's when you know you're back down to the good soft core of the lacquer stick. Um, and I've had lacquer sticks where they just completely dry out and they're like hard as a rock. And that's the point where you need to replace them. Um, so once you get down to the softer center core, which I'm, this is feeling pretty buttery now. So I think we're good. Um, I'm using, uh, in this case, Kim wipes, uh, Kim Tech wipes, which are lintless, like lab wipes. Yep. Um, something like that, or like a, uh, like glasses cleaning cloth, something that doesn't leave a lot of lint, because what's gonna happen is you're, you're gonna apply a fair amount of friction to get off the excess, and paper towels start to rip, yeah. and they start to leave boogers on it. Yeah, especially with uh, fibers on, yeah, so in, like in maybe, the wax. Maybe even like cloth, like a, like a cotton cloth would work as well. Mm. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, I think there's some, most of this is all gold. So we're just gonna start with this panel here and I'm gonna do it. So I'm just going to be very sloppy and rub this in to all the areas. Yeah, it's like a wash. Yeah. And now the one thing that the paint, the lacquer sticks can struggle with is uh, you'll notice on, our gold here. There's some areas where it's like really filled in, yeah, yeah, and like yeah. the, and it's like and it's Solid, just attached. Yeah. So you got to make sure that you you are aggressive on that and really get those filled in. Uh, one problem you will run into uh, is it's not ideal for doing big surfaces like that, like the big openings. And as you're wiping it off, it may want to come off. But you know, you just touch it up and uh, give it a few tries, and it should be okay. All right, so. All right, so that's good to start and, and we'll give it a pass. So we're gonna take our lint-free wipes and just start, and it's gonna look really awful <laughs> at first. And you're gonna get gold all over you. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm being much more sloppy with this than I did on my original. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like buffing it out. Yeah. But you get the idea. And um, I even did, uh, I believe when I did this at home, because um, you'll notice that 
particularly with the gold on the white, you're you're getting some remnants of uh, of the gold on the mm -hmm. surface. So a few things you can do for that. Um, number one, I don't rub really really hard on the the big big filled in areas. I just try to very lightly buff it. And the other thing I will do uh, sometimes is leave this set for just a little bit mm. so it starts to firm up a little bit more so that you're not rubbing off the text itself as much as just the the surface stuff that you want to get uh, rid of. But even just that amount of it. Yeah. And um, it, it, what I did for my final is I, I very lightly moistened uh, one of these with some alcohol and like super lightly r ran it over and that tended to remove most of the uh the gold that was getting on the white the lingering stuff on the yeah. top, top surface yeah yeah but lacquer stick so i did that and i if i can find my black marker I'll, I'll put it but i did the barcode as well um with the black now the other one um that we have are these little badges right mm -hmm. and the logo so let's try if you want to try the yeah the white, the white one. one yeah yeah so now the the badges are challenging because they are that big you're filling in a lot of open area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up having to do like one or two passes because the white was getting a little lumpy. But uh, overall, I was happy with how it turned out. for all my fingerprints but we have the back uh, done and then the uh now i don't know if this is is what they're thinking but i like the idea is that this could be a cutaway oh okay cross section <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know if that was their intention but the front is fairly easy to remove and you mm. can totally do a, a cutaway noodle bar wow. yeah wow. so we have our cup, wow. cup assembled I mean, part of me looks at this and says, hey, you could put some aligner in here and use this as like a coffee cup <laughs> or use it as, you know, a, yeah. a reusable yeah. noodle serving dispenser, a container. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. All right. So we have our, our cup done and I, I believe it is now time for ramen. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To give you an idea, so if this is the it's pretty elaborate for just ramen, yeah. I, I mean, see that, yeah, but it's uh, it's kind of ingenious. They did some nice uh, uh, layering of the build to give it a uh, more 3D effect. All right, so let me cut out those pieces and then we'll take a look, yeah, right here. So, nice. I wonder what the yeah. approval process was like for this, getting like, through mm, the cup noodle folks. Yeah. The, the distinctive look of our freeze-dried ramen or yeah. dried, dehydrated ramen needs to like, uh, have certain amounts of layering and, and texture. Right. I gotta, I gotta, so this has the cutouts, right? Not only is it is it keyed for a specific spot, but then you'll see the underlying ramen popping through the whole, like, well, I don't even know why that was needed, but I love it. Building up. Oh my gosh. Our, oh my our, gosh. A ramen Tetris. I feel like. All right. So, here we got our. Wow. So that's eight pieces connected. <laughs> Nine and ten are coming. Yeah. So we have our. Uh, the bottom. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now, the. Now. I did something with mine at home, which I, I, I think is fun to do. And I put I, I put chopsticks in it. Ah, okay. 
because we did, it didn't come with that. Oh, okay. Uh, they didn't come with chopsticks, but I felt like now, and I know, I know, it's bad form to leave your ch chopsticks sticking in your ramen. It, However. You're telling a story. Yeah, we're telling a story because, uh, and, and, and this takes up too much shelf space. Yes, yes. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these down and then drill some holes. Oh, nice. All right, let's, let's test fit our ramen. So we're gonna, because it doesn't go to the whole way to the bottom, it kind of, it sits up above a little bit. So we're gonna say, I don't know, we want, you know, how far do we want our chopsticks? Like maybe a little short. Yeah, that, like right? yeah offset, great, yeah. great. So we're gonna we're gonna eyeball it and mm. chop them mm. right about here. And I see what you mean because this ramen core plugs perfectly in here, but I wanted to remove this front. Well, you, you get the cross section of ramen. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Also, while we're talking about this and the cross section of ramen. There is a um, there's a little blurb in the manual about mm -hmm. that. They're uh, like this space left at the bottom of the ramen is very important. Oh. It is it's it's designed that way while it's in the cup so that everything. Uh, I, the reasoning was, oh, the boiling water seeps down underneath so it can get to the bottom of the noodles better and steam and help steam it. This so makes that, so much sense. That 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 res that that ramen core is very specifically designed. So this is actually like a volume wise, how much actual ramen you get in a, in a cup noodle, which in my mind, like, it's not that much. But I guess when you reconstitute know, it with the water, yeah, yep. it's a meal. Yeah. But, and then it's uneven, like you said, in the bottom. And we can see the secret of the cup noodle, which is when, when placed into the cup. Well, as, as the uh, box said, all secrets will be revealed. You have the empty cavity for the hot water yeah. to sit in. All right, hopefully I'm drilling these <laughs> in a good spot. Um, so if you, if you want to drill holes in your ramen kit, I'd recommend using a step bit, which are, which are perfect for drilling holes in plastic and not having it grab and twist the plastic and mm. tear it. Mm. It'll make a nice clean hole. And it's also good for like, you can start with a smaller size and easily step up to the next one if if need be. So, uh, so our chopsticks are gonna go in, and <clears throat> now I uh, I epoxied these in at home, but for today's build, we're just gonna kind of let them sit in place. I think. Let's see. So, <laughs> so there's our our ramen plug with nice. our chopsticks. Uh, oh, yeah. Cool. So at this point, uh, the, the ramen is completed. Now Norm is doing the very important task of cutting out food greeblies. Mm -hmm. Food greeblies. Uh, New, nutritious nurnies. <laughs> okay, so while you're doing that, Norm, uh, I'm gonna, now uh, I did decide to do a little bit of weathering, weathering, weathering on our ramen. Uh, so I have, I think this is the one that I use. It's like a kind of a tan. I had uh, our friend Ken Chung, who's a accomplished prop builder and a really accomplished painter. I jokingly, cause he's the one who actually got this for me originally. And I jokingly was messaging him like, what's the wash color for ramen? And he took it really seriously. He's like, I think like a good nice tan, like a medium tan or khaki would be a good choice. So, yeah. All right, so I'm just making kind of a wash by adding a bunch of water to this so it's like really thin. And, uh, and pretty much our traditional uh, weathering style is how we're gonna go. We're going to, I'm gonna start on the bottom in case I don't have this consistency right. And I should have brought a, a bigger brush, but um, you get the idea. Sean, you know this. I'm letting the people out there know. Yeah. The 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 greeblies, the the food greeblies. Yeah. You got egg, okay? Yeah. You got shrimp and there are five pieces of shrimp. I wonder if that is standard. The, I know Pro there probably is a standard. Yeah, either by weight yeah. or by number of pieces, but five pieces of shrimp and then there's the mystery meat. It is literally called the mystery meat, <laughs> labeled as such in the instruction manual. Yep. Sounds to me still like a secret unrevealed. I don't know. 
<laughs> I loved it. I love that it was actually referred to as Mr. Meat in the in the guide, though. Okay, so uh, I'm just weathering's the best. Yes. It, I, I'm just slathering this on, and then I'm gonna just kind of uh, pat it with a paper towel. So it just it just gives a little depth to the flat noodles, and and does the the amazing uh, noodle sculpt that they did uh, gives it justice. Sean, they're not flat noodles, they're ramen. I know. So, uh, for our, for time's sake, I'm just gonna do the top, which is what we only see. And um, if we wanna do a cutaway version later, we'll, we'll, we'll do the front too. Mm -hmm. Do our chopsticks. So hey, that looks pretty good. I think so. Yeah. I mean, if and especially it's subtle, but if you compare like how the sides look, I mean, it pops. Totally. It's, it's just it's why we always do the weather. Yeah. Um, weathering in the panel lining. So that was just like a nice. This is a wood color from mm. uh, Vallejo, but nice, you know, dark brown, uh, tan khaki thing. All right. So we have um, uh, our mystery meats and our uh, shrimps. And uh, I believe egg. egg, right? Now, uh, oh yes, the, the green onion. <laughs> the green onion, which is, it's basically twist ties without the the, uh, the twist part. Uh, and they are just meant to be uh, cut up. So they have you just do like, yeah. I love this. This is such a ridiculous uh, attention to detail. Um, so depending on how onion, onion no, we, let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's keep the onions yeah, at the keep minimum. Keep it to a minimum, yeah. So we have our green onion. Just a garnish, just yeah. a little bit of Now, um, if we want, we have, we have shrimp stickers that we can put on. I did a little wash on the shrimp and the meat, but uh, we don't have to do that. Um, but I, I did I did a little white wash on my shrimps at home and a little brown wash on the mystery meat. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I don't but know if we're I, gonna do this. Like, there's some extra decals here. There's one decal that looks like the oh, you we have to put that on the expiration. Yeah, like the the the, the printer. Or the you know what? Let's <laughs> put that. Printer. Let's put that on because it's yeah. fun and it looks great and it's easier to do before I put their food. In. Does so that go right on the, the yep. bottom? It goes just, on the bottom. Just yep. across the bottom? Yep. Oh my gosh. Because it's it's so particularly well done that we should show that off. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is, of course, this, you know, it's gonna be uh, printed differently for every every package. And so it has that distinct, <laughs> yep. very cheap printing, cheap printed look. It's got dot bits. It's yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to, you know what? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a shrimp sticker on just because I want to see what this looks like. I didn't do the shrimp stickers. Oh wait, are the, are they matched to a particular shrimp? They could be. I think it might be. There's like six different shrimp stickers. I don't know if I have the right shrimp. I'm gonna try it. All right. Let's see. That looks about right. Yep. I'm gonna go for it. Okay. <laughs> That's so great. I'm actually kind of surprised they, they didn't do water slides for this. <laughs> Just <laughs> put it over to you. You know, that's not bad. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm it dulls kinda, it a little bit it, and it, it wraps around pretty well. It does. It's uh they use really nice thin stickers. I'm actually yeah. I'm I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, I think this actually looks better than my my weathered ones. <laughs> yeah, so they, they are using a very thin kind of plasticky uh sticker medium um which wraps around really well and it gets in the nooks and crannies so well, well done big mm, guy mm. okay so there's our before and after shrimp so um i say drop our plug in and our, get our yes chopsticks in and as then well. and then garnish as needed uh norm Great. Is this the right hand? Yeah, this is the this is Yeah, they're about the same, I think. Yeah, we'll sprinkle some of these egg in there. It, okay. And it has a picture of the Nissan factory, which looks like a cup noodle, apparently, which is cool. And um, let's see, reverse things. Yes, yeah, so talking about suspending the noodle cluster. Salt-based style. Yep. <laughs> 
There we go. Okay, so there's there's a few added details that that they included, which I thought was nice. So they actually have the cup noodle, the cover. Yeah. Yes, the seal. Yeah. So what I did, what I did in my, as I, I I love this attention to detail, um, and I wanted to use it somehow, but still have the food visible. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of did this, uh, like the steam, the the, it, the steam cover. Exactly. So, so I just yes. kind of left it peeled back. Yes. Like you might yes. do for real. It's a little bit adhesive. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, and it's Wonderful. it's low tax, so you can actually uh, take it off and reposition it pretty easily. And then they, I, this, I don't remember ever seeing this in the U.S. version, but there is this also. What which is that? Is, the, so apparently the Japanese version comes with this little uh, tape that you can use to tape it back shut once you put the hot water in. Oh, so, I so wait, you, wait, 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 we all knew that you put the chopsticks on top. I know, right? But to keep the still, top it's, a, on. it's a nice, nice touch. <laughs> yeah, you would, you would rest your yeah, chopsticks exactly, on, yep. or your fork or whatever, yeah, right? But the, apparently yeah. the Japanese version has mm, an actual mm. official. Lay, uh, tape that you use for or that. you know if you don't finish it in one in one yeah. setting you could tape it shut and it's a little bit of portion control yes yes so <laughs> i mean it's so good so th i mean th that's pretty much our uh finished cup noodle quick and dirty with our, with our mystery meat and shrimp and egg and uh and no we didn't i didn't finish up the back here or the text but you i just wanted to give you the general idea and i apologize for my messiness on that hey but you know it wouldn't be a cooking show style format without some pre-made ones so you did bring but in i did bring my my one from your, home yes yes and uh with the cleaned up text so that looks yeah. it's not you know 100 percent clean but i was happy with it i also noticed did you hold your uh your greeblies in place with a little yeah. bit of super glue yeah, so i actually glued all of mine together oh that's the real the style in. yeah right there, there you go the, the floating yeah. noodles and the, the food that's like in a perfectly placed position yep so highly recommend doing glued, that glued on the green onion nice nice and i thought norm yes that it would be remiss of us not to actually compare this with the real thing so we have here now this is the american cup noodle <laughs> cup noodles as, yeah, yeah as we noticed but it is you know that's size uh, accurate okay yeah i think it's pretty good i mean the hat hash marks are pretty good we don't get the wall of text like on mm, the japanese yeah. version but i i really want to see how the shrimp pull it off okay yeah we so, haven't opened it yet. all right so let's <laughs> oh, I'm also remembering you got to put a little bit of a, a little bit of the salt. Mm -hmm. We got to use some fake salt. Yeah. Maybe some powder they can yeah, put on the top. Powder. So, yeah. so we have, we have our yeah. original compared to the, yeah. I, I got to say, the, the, the fake one looks much more appetizing. <laughs> Where's our, uh, so we got, uh, yeah, there's our real shrimp. A little bit of shrinkage there. there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it hasn't been fully reconstituted yet. I'm not going to count the shrimp, but, but I can see at least three. Mm. Although this is a prepared one, I would say. Oh, I, you're right. You're right. It's prepared, so you don't get the powder. You're absolutely right, right. Right. It's already been absorbed into. That's that's what that wash is. Yeah. The wash is the soup. So is the soup that's that's, uh, that's that has absorbed all that salt. I say it's pretty good, and and while the real shrimp are smaller, I mean that's pretty accurate. I think. I think they. I, and I don't think we have mystery meat. We don't have the mystery meat. <laughs> They ran Which out of the kaiju. Unfortunate. Oh. <laughs> Sean. So, so one of our more ridiculous builds, uh, but it, it, it's fun if if you just like something like a quirky model and and, and want just like a quick afternoon thing, uh, the cup noodle, I, I mean, how can you pass it up? It's yeah. just too good. Easily uh, available, readily available, super easy to assemble. All you really need are the nippers, but go the extra mile. I love links to where you can find all the yeah. paints and even that the, the vortex fancy mixer. vortex mixer in the description below. But yeah. thank you so much, Sean, for bringing in this lovely Oh, thanks kit. for building, it's always fun. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.